This video is meant to be an introduction to advanced types of integrals. And what we're going to do is uh, review the types of integrals we already know in, uh, calc from Calc 1 up to multivariable calculus, and then segue into the newer types of integrals. So you can see how that all fits together. So of course the first type of integral that we learn is a regular single integral. We have a function f of x, a function that takes one variable and gives one number out. So you plug in a number, it gives you a number. And we integrate, we know we can integrate such functions over an interval from a to b. So on the real number line where this function is defined, we look at an interval from a to b and that defines the integral. Of course the integral equals a number. Now what's actually going on there? The integral is taking all the values that f of x equals in this interval. And of course there are infinitely many and in a way it sums them up, it adds them all up. But of course not exactly that because that would just be infinity typically or something undefined maybe. Um, just uncountably many numbers, we can't just add them up. But what we can do is we can add them up if they are weighted by the x values themselves. right? And in fact, that's the original Riemann sum definition of an integral, is you add up the values of the function times a bunch of little delta x's. So you break this up into a bunch of little pieces, each one of size delta x. And then you take a representative value inside the little subinterval, each one of these, and that's your f of x. But yeah, you multiply by the width of that subinterval. You're weighting it by uh, the amount of x that that f of x kind of goes with. And you do that for all of them, add them up, and that's the Riemann sum. And then, of course, the integral is, the, is a limit of those, the value that it approaches. Okay, but in the end, what I really want to get out of this discussion is that the integral is the sum of the values of f of x weighted by x. The weighted by x part is the delta x. So in, even though there are infinitely many of them, the delta x's are really, really tiny going to zero, and so somehow that sum works out. That makes sense, and we get a number. Okay, so then we move to a double integral. And it's the same idea, only we now have a function of two variables, f of x, y, so you give it two variables and it gives you a single answer in return. So it is defined on the x, y plane or some subset thereof. And instead of integrating over an interval, we now integrate over a region, a two-dimensional region. We usually we write the two integral symbols to mean a double integral and we write dA rather than dx. So this time, the integral is the sum of the values of f of x, y, but now weighted by area, and that's what the dA is. The corresponding Riemann sum is the sum of f of x, y times delta a. So it's like this function equals, you know, infinitely many, all kinds of values throughout here, but if we just look at the values that it equals on r, and we add them up, but again, that just adding them up doesn't make any sense, but if we add them up weighted by area, that's what the double integral is. Okay? And then, if you understand that, then we're just you can just keep going up in dimensions. We have triple integrals, a function of three variables defined in space. So this function assigns a number to every point in space. We have a 3D region within that space and so we can integrate our function over that region and that's called a triple integral. And the analogous statement is that this the triple integral is the sum of the values of the function f of xyz but now weighted by volume. Weighted by volume. Okay so that's just a brief uh, overview of the three types of integrals you learn through multivariable calculus. So what kinds of integrals are we going to do next? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to allow sort of different combinations of functions with dimensions. So what you've just seen is f of x, a single variable function, 
integrated over a one-dimensional thing, an, a, an interval, a part of a line. A two-variable function integrated over a two-dimensional region. And a three-variable function integrated over a three-dimensional region. But there is a way to uh, generalize this or, or, or mix and match some of these numbers of variables with the dimension. Let me show you. <clears throat> if we organize our thoughts as you see on the screen, um, so a single integral is an integral that is over a 1D region, a double integral is over a 2D region, and a triple integral is an integral over a 3D region. Okay, well, a single integral over a 1D region, that could be a a one variable function over just part of the number line, that's a 1D region. And again, we write this as we always have since Calc 1, like this. Or, and we are going to allow ourselves to do single integrals of functions of two or three variables. A function of two variables is defined in the plane, but we can still just take a 1D region of the plane. So here's you know, the plane, x, the xy plane, and we could integrate over some curve. And that would be considered a single integral. So if I name that curve c, I could integrate f of xy over c. Now, the question is, what, what's the d piece? What am I weighting the, for, the values of f of x, y over? Um, well, there's actually uh, a couple of ways you could do this, but I'm going to write ds uh, as my, just my example on this page anyway. Um, this is arc length. So you m might remember from multivariable calculus that s is the letter we use for arc length. So just to talk about this for a second before I continue, what I'm saying is, um, Again, this function, f of xy, it's assigning a number to every point in the plane. But now suppose we just have a nice one-dimensional curve in this plane. And we would like to sort of add up, you know, the amount of the function on this curve. Just like we add up the amount of the function over a to b, it's the same idea. It's just happening in, 2D, in a 2D context, but it's still a 1D thing. And so it's still a single integral. And it's just what are the what values does this function f take along this curve? And we want to kind of add them up. But remember, you can't just add up infinitely many numbers, you know, that and expect to get something less than infinity. Um, we have to weight it. And what we're going to do is we'll weight it by arc length. So again, you can sort of picture breaking this up into a bunch of little pieces. Literally, how long is each piece? in a arc length sense, in a curved, in, you know, the length of a curve sense. And that's what ds means. Now, the computation of that probably seems like it would be, you know, go up a level of difficulty versus this. And you're kind of right, but it's not too bad. And we'll get to that. But that's the idea. We're adding up the values of this function along a one-dimensional curve. So that's, that's called a line integral which isn't the best word because line makes you think of a straight line and this does not have to be a straight line at all. But that's the, that's the traditional uh, term that's used for single integrals in a 2D setting or in a 3D setting. And of course that's kind of the same thing. So now we could have a function of three variables and we have space. So this function assigns a number to every point in space. And we have some one-dimensional curve in that space, you know, with a beginning point and an end point. And again, let's say it's named C. Then we might want to know what the values of this function are just along the curve, and we might want to sort of add them up, again, weight it by arc length. Okay, that also is called a line integral. So it's a line integral if you're doing a single integral, but in a higher dimension, whether it be 2D or 3D. In principle, you could go higher than 3D. We're not going to do that, though. 
Okay, so these are the two new types of single integrals, what we call line integrals, just functions of two or three variables, but we're still integrating over a 1D thing. Notice we still just use a single integral symbol for these things. Okay. Now, double integral, again, we start with the traditional double integral, where we're over a region of some sort in 2D, and we want to integrate our function of two variables over a 2D region, and it's weighted by area. Well, we can't go down to a single variable function, that wouldn't work here, but we can go up to a function of three variables. And we're in a 3D context, so this function assigns a value to every point in space, but maybe we're just looking at a surface within that space. We'll call that capital S. And so we might just want to, instead of looking at this function everywhere, we just want to look at what this function is equal to on the points of a surface, a 2D surface inside of 3D space. And that is something we can do. And we would weight it by the area by surface area. Okay, and it's, the, it's a similar kind of thing. Now this is called a surface integral. All right. And then finally, triple integrals. Well, we don't have a new version of this. We just have the one I've already mentioned on the previous page. So we just have 3D space, we have some 3D region, and we're just, let me call that R, we're integrating over R, F of X, Y, Z, and it will be weighted by volume. So that's the one we already saw. Now, there is no new version of this because we're already maxed out at 3D. You could do a function of four variables, I suppose, um, and do a 3D region inside 4D, but we're not going to do any of that. But yeah, in principle, you could go up to higher dimensions. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm noticing a small, I, I shouldn't have put three integrals here. These are all, both of these are double integrals. So we should use two integrals for the symbol, two integrals, a double integral, with a DA. Three integrals should only be here, the triple integral weighted by volume, DV. And again, one integral symbol for single integrals weighted by some sort of length, whether it's X or arc length or whatever. Okay, so again, the new ones are these two, although they're going to sort of work the same way. We'll treat them together. And then this one. Okay, now one thing I just want to say in closing is that we are talking about real valued functions at all times here. The number of variables was changing, but all these functions always just gave you a number. We did not deal with vector fields, right? Functions that you give it either one or two or three functions, three variables, and it gives you a vector. We're not dealing with that. That's going to play into this narrative as well, but um, we'll get to that in due time. Okay.